um, teacher uses the strategies with students on, um, on during um, read aloud time on a daily basis, during read aloud time on a daily basis. So every day, students use the rereading and read question strategy um, independently on a weekly basis with teacher feedback often given. So I would be assessing them maybe every Friday in a small group or during workshop. I would be making sure that my students independently, what does that look like? Well, that's where I went back and we actually fixed some of our rubric. Well, what does it look like when a student is actually, um, you know, doing this strategy on their own without my help? Well, that's what it looks like. The students drawing the boxes, they're underlining the evidence and the text on their own. They're reading a question. Some of our students started boxing paragraphs. They started organizing their paragraphs. I'm putting paragraph one, paragraph two. So they were actually, they weren't being attacked by the text. Some of our students <laughs> shut down immediately because our texts move up so much in second grade. And then all of a sudden in third grade, I mean, our kids are just nailed, right? The text is so much heavier. They totally break down, they shut down. So we want to give them strategies to break it down. So hopefully they're organizing their paragraphs, they're looking at the different things, they're going back and actually finding and locating the answers and underlining their evidence. That's what we want them to be able to do. And so we go to our four over here. 90% of the students can explain the purpose of the routine and apply it independently. So they're doing that, they can explain it to, if you came in the classroom, they could explain it to you, they could teach it to a new student if they came in our classroom in the middle of the year, that that's what good readers do. Number three, so then we looked at what we were taking away from it. Teacher uses the strategy with students on a daily basis during language arts, during the comprehension component. So maybe we're just doing it during that one component. We're not doing it throughout the thing. Students refer back to the comprehension questions to help them locate and underline the evidence boxing it. They're using it independently with teacher feedback and 80% of the students. Okay, so I'm thinking this is a little bit, it's less difficult, but it was still pretty hard to do that year one. We were probably caught between a two and a three. The teacher models the strategies with students on a weekly basis. During language arts, teacher draws boxes or brackets and underlining as a reminder to students to focus on the specific areas. Teacher asks students to explain why they need to underline the parts of a text. Students have used the strategy independently. So where the percentage really got in our way from becoming a three. That's kind of difficult. So and I might not expect myself to be there the first year I'm trying to do a strategy. So we're trying to, but my goal is to eventually be a four. I'm still not a four. Still not a four. So, some weeks I'm a three, <laughs> right? Right now I'm probably between a two and a three still because it's very hard to get that many students that are effectively doing it. Okay, especially your class changes. Jennifer said the first year we didn't monitor we didn't monitor our students that had reading difficulties with decoding the first year the second year we threw them all in there our kids came in came up higher in decoding our first grade teachers were rock stars down there with our that part of um, open court they came in they were ready to go this year I have a group of five students that came in struggling really struggling like hardcore struggling some kids that have been retained, some kids that are up for testing, things like that. We all have those students in our rooms. So I'm focusing on decoding and some other strategies with them. I'm giving them these strategies at their level, but I'm, you know, I'm not monitoring it like that. I'm focusing on something else on our framework. I'm, I would be focusing on over here with them, the left side as opposed to the right. So my group this year would not be the same. So, and then we go all the way back to a one, has just introduced the rereading question and questioning strategy. Teacher models it, demonstrates it. The students aren't really doing much with it. Teacher's doing it, teacher's doing it. And a lot of the time, we never leave the one when we're doing a new strategy. The teacher, the teacher, the teacher, the teacher, the teacher, right? 
So we want, as we're looking up, we want to start looking at how we're handing that responsibility off to the students and how we're monitoring it, what it kind of looks like. As we got to the threes and the fours, is there anything you noticed? We went from being more general to, to very specific, right, what we wanted to see. And if you look at the draft you have, we were not very specific. That was our first one, and we were trying to, we were trying to work on the QTA, the questioning the author techniques, and we could not measure that. That was very difficult. I could go back now and do a case study on, on doing that with expository text or doing it with um, fictional, fictional text narratives, but that strategy, could, it was really hard to measure. We took it off. Are we still doing it with our students? Yeah, it could be a variable, but we couldn't measure it, so we took it off, but it was on the first rubric, and we're missing a lot of um, specifics on there. So as we came back to our team, every time we met, we came up with a rough draft. We helped each other that couldn't come up with their rubrics, get started at our team meetings in our cohorts. And then each time we came back and brought our rubric a little bit closer to what we wanted. All right, and so we were sharing it. The key was we were sharing with one another. Sometimes we were on our rubric, somebody else was on the rubric, and somebody else was still trying to fix their question as they were working on it and collecting their data. So your teams are the most important part because that's how they're, that's how they're going to help you kind of bring it into play. So when you come a little bit later, when you come over here and just take a little tour, our first year was this one, and then we changed it and we added and we continued it into uh, the content area. We changed it our, uh, a little bit, but there's more examples of rubrics. There's one for QAR with social studies for comprehension for third graders for main idea and details. I'm sorry, not QAR for um, main idea and details. And it's si it's not as complex. It's simple. She picked a content area, and so you can grab it and look at it over there. There's one for the structured language practice strategies, and there's another one over here for rhyming uh, student rhyming observation rubric, which is a little bit different. So you can see that there's all different ways they go from being complex to very simple. It just depends what you're looking at. Yeah. Something else that I just noticed as I'm looking at it, if you think about it, the one who's doing all the work and the one and the two. Teacher, right? Yeah. It's like teacher focus. It's all about what the teacher is doing. As you move into three and four, who do you see taking on more of a role? Students, so it's another way of thinking about it. So as I'm starting, I'm doing all of the work, but eventually what do I want to see coming out of my students? And that would be on your three and your four. So like Casey said, it doesn't have to be this um, you know, complex. You can start out much simpler and then decide um, the next year around if you wanted to add to it, tweak it, make it a little more difficult. Like you said, I mean, we really stuck ourselves because we have this high expectation here of what we're looking for, the 80 and the 90, it's going to take us a long time to probably get there. But that so is our goal. We want 80% of our students at least achieving that, right? We want them, we want to have that high expectation. Now, we had some teachers that monitored, how, how familiar are you with SIPs? Okay, it's a reading intervention program from Dr. Sheffelbein, and um, so one of our teachers picked that, and their rubric was a little bit different. It was more focused on the teacher implementation, that the teacher was doing this program, maybe a four would be five days a week with an extra 15 minutes for, um, for IDR time where they're independently reading and reviewing those, the easy readers and they're, they have that time built in. We're, we're a four when you don't have a lot of time for them. Maybe they're not reading, maybe you're just having them um, do it five days a week without that extra part. And maybe a three might be that you have three days a week, but you're doing the extra reading too. Maybe a two. So it can be really simple like that also for your rubric. It doesn't have to be complex. It can be more focused on how the teacher is implementing it. Okay, so we have our rubrics, so now it's time to implement, actually get busy on working on your case studies. So we have some pictures here, and then we have a, another video clip to show 
a little more implementation. And this is, it, the videos that both of us have are from actually showing teachers how they can, we're going over the strategy again, so teachers who are not familiar with it could use it with their students in content. So it's not like if you walked into the room and the kids were doing it on their own and you were questioning them, it's actually we're going through a process so teachers know what to do with it.
So the author gave you the clues, and then you took your notes. Everybody